Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is going to be a review on basically how to design a house and some of the things that you'll need to know for your final exam. I'm going to go through this rather quickly. So if you need something slower or more detailed, just go back to the project videos um, for Architecture 2. And uh, those are on the main Schoology page. I will kind of clean up the Schoology page so you'll actually see those without uh, having to look for them too much. Um, but they are they're pretty easy to find. They're kind of close to the top. Um, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I've got this little structure of a house uh, thus far and let's see, well I guess I probably should start from the beginning. Um, of course everybody knows that they can you know draw their four walls and, and things like that. So what I'll do is I'll go over how to edit those walls. Um, and that's one of the things you're going to have to do for your final exam because they are, this is going to be a Habitat habitat for Humanity house. Um, so things are going to look a little different. They typically don't build Habitat for Humanity houses with bricks all the way around them. Sometimes they do, but most of the times they don't. So the wall that we're going to build for this, okay, um, we're going to change the common bricks because uh, they're not going to be bricks, but we're going to still have that finished layer on here. But uh, I'm going to have to create a material, and I'm going to call it lapboard or clapboard, whichever one you prefer to call it. Okay, so there's, my, and then I'm going to change my graphics. The color, I want to select the color that I want the wall to be, something kind of like that. Um, I'm going to leave the pattern, as far as the pattern color, the same, but I'm going to change the pattern to a horizontal line so I'll have these horizontal lines going all the way down to my house kind of representing that lap board and then I'm going to go to appearance and I'm going to change the color here as well and that's really all I have to do to have my desired color I'm not worried about the rendered appearance um, we're not going to do any renderings on these uh, clicking OK uh, now, of course, that lap board is not three and five eighths inch thick, so I'm going to change the size of that to one inch. Uh, thermal air layer, uh, because I'm actually going to use a wood. I'm not going to use a masonite. I'm going to use either a wood or vinyl siding for my lap board, so I don't need this thermal air layer at all, so I'm going to delete that. Membrane layer, I'm going to change that to a vapor barrier or vapor retarder. Okay, there is no thickness involved. Uh, substrate is, is plywood sheathing. It's already set, and it is three quarters of an inch. That's what I want. Structure is not going to be metal stud. So I'm going to click on metal stud and change that to softwood lumber. Then I'm going to change the size to the thickness of those two by fours. We all know two by fours are actually one and a half by three and a half inches. So that's what I'm going to change this to is three. 0.5 inches and I don't want this interior membrane layer I'm going to delete that and the wall board the gypsum wall board for the interior finish or drywall is another word that we uh, use to reference that it's already there so I don't have to change that click OK and apply and click OK so now I have those walls and I think all of them all right so it is saved. Uh, floor that comes up is this 12-inch um, generic floor. I'm going to use that, but I'm going to edit it too uh, because I really want my floor to be 6 inches. I'm going to duplicate that, rename it to 6-inch uh, concrete because it's going to be concrete slab. Okay, so that's 6-inch concrete. Now I'm going to have to go into the structure and edit that. So the structure I'm going to change to cast in place concrete, cast in place gray. Okay, I'm going to change the thickness of it to six inches. All right, and I'm going to add a finished material for the inside of my house. Um, so I'm going to click on insert to add a line. I'm going to move that line up by clicking the up button. So I want it above the core boundary. I'm going to change it from a structure to a finish layer. And by category, I'm going to click on that and change it to carpet. And of course, you can change your carpet to any color you want. 
And the thickness, I'm just going to estimate uh, to be three quarters of an inch. Then I'm going to click OK. And I think I've done everything. Click OK. All right, so those floors are made. Concrete slab floor. Um, I'm going to click around on all my walls to place the floor. And I'm also going to go ahead and go in and zoom in. And since this is going to be a monolithic slab, I want to move these pink lines that form the boundary of my floor. I'm going to go ahead and move them to the... Um, Maybe I need to click escape again. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move them to the outer edge of my uh, wall perimeter because I want that concrete slab to come all the way to the edge. And you might have to zoom in really close to get it. And I'm going to click on this line, do the same thing. Okay, and I'm going to zoom out. Go to the other side. Whoa, too far. And actually, the bottom corner is what I'll do. Click on that line, bump it out, and then click on the bottom line, bump it down. Okay, so now my slab will come all the way out to the edge of my walls. Click on the green check mark, and now I have a floor, I have floor material, I have a concrete slab. All that delicious stuff. Um, next thing I need is a ceiling on this level. And that should be pretty easy. I'm going to click on Architecture. I'm going to click on Ceiling. And I'm going to change this ceiling type. This is the default ceiling type. with a 2x4 acoustic system. We don't want that. Click on Edit Type. Um, and you really don't have to duplicate. Even though I've been telling you to duplicate, uh, you can actually just go ahead and rename it. Um, let's see. Drywall. Okay, but just keep in mind that if you rename what's already in here and change it, then you will not be able to use this particular material on the same job. You won't be able to go back to it because you've already replaced it. But you can always create another one. Okay, but anyway, drywall ceiling. And I'm going to call it ceiling. Okay, so I renamed it. I'm going to click on edit. I'm going to get rid of this finish. This is the uh, acoustical tiles. We don't want the acoustical tiles. We're going to delete that. Uh, structure. Okay. Is, I'm going to change the structure to jumpsum wall board. And then I'm going to change the thickness to 5 eighths of an inch, which is, you know, typical thickness of ceiling. Ceiling drywall. Okay, all that's taken care of. I'm going to click Apply. Okay. And now, boom, I've got a ceiling. It, it, this little dialog box will pop up. Just ignore it. It just says that you can't see that right now. Uh, and I really don't care if I can see it or not. Okay, so now I want to go to Level 2 and place the floor there. So I'm jumping into Level 2. And uh, you can hide your roof if you feel like you need to. I feel like I need to, so I'm going to hide it. And I can't see my walls, uh, so I'm going to come over to my properties box and click on my underlay in my underlay section, my range base. I'm going to make that level one so I can see those level one walls. There they go. And now I am going to place a floor. Okay, now for the second floor, um, you can use either a wood truss 12 inch with carpet finish. Or you can use a wood joist 10 inch with wood finish. If you want to replace the wood finish, you can. Uh, so either one of these will work. This one is a truss system. This one is not, but that's okay. We don't need necessarily need a truss system on a small house like this. Okay, so I'm going to use that. And I'm going to click all the way around. Click the green check mark. And yes, I would like for the walls to come up to the floor. It says the, the floor roof overlaps the highlighted walls. Would you like to join the geometry and cut the overlapping volume out of the walls? Sure. All right, so now I have floors at both levels. Now here's what I want to do. I want to double check this and make sure that my ceiling height and my floor height and all that kind of jive together. So I'm going to go to, uh, actually, I think I'm going to just do a cutaway. 
Uh, we'll go to view, do a section view, cut through my house like so, escape, double click. Okay, and see how that turned out. And as you see, my ceiling is up inside of my floor joist. So I click on my level two line. I, I don't want to adjust the floor. I want to adjust the, the elevation. So I click there. And now I'm going to bump that up. No, actually, it was too high. I need to bump it down. So you'll get in here a little bit closer. Now, sometimes you might have to bump it up depending on which floor system that you choose. If I chose the 12-inch floor system, I probably would have ended up bumping it up a tad. Okay, so now I have, I know I have 8 feet. I'm going to go in there and measure it to make sure. From the bottom from the floor to the ceiling. And I got 8 feet and a little bit extra because it's kind of a crooked line. So my interior walls. I'm on level 1. I know I'm going to have a front door right in here somewhere. Um, so I'm going to divide my space up. I'm going to click on File. Well, not File. I'm sorry. I'm going to click on Architecture, Walls, change my wall, and I'm going to use a 4 and 7 eighths inch partition. And I'm going to think about how I want my walls to be. Now I have to consider, you know, I'm going to have three bedrooms. It's got to have three bedrooms, and I want those bedrooms to be of a nice size. I know I can't have them really big. Okay, because this is a small house, uh, but I do have to have at least, um, you know, 10 foot by 7 foot, you know, 70 square foot of, of space. And I cannot have any dimension less than 7 foot in that room. So I have to be careful about how I lay down uh, the rooms and where I place my closets and things of that nature. I've got to make the best use of all of my space possible. So what I'm doing is I'm not drawing rooms, is I'm going to divide space up. So, hmm, let's see. And I'm going to just go with something very, not even unique at all, just something very basic. And I'm going to pull this over about 11 feet. I'm going to draw a line all the way back here. And that's going to take care of some bedrooms. Okay. And let's see, there's probably going to be a master bedroom back over here somewhere with a master bath possibly. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this. I might even just draw it all the way through because I will use that line uh, in dividing up these rooms. Okay, so now I am going to, let's see, I want this side to be seven feet at least. Okay, so then it'll I'll basically have a seven by ten room. Now I want a closet in there as well. Um, so I'm going to offset this. Let's see, offset. And how far? I'm going to offset it. Let's see, probably about two feet, six inches. Okay, now that'll provide closet space for two bedrooms right here. And let me see how much bedroom space I've got here, if that's going to be enough. Yes, that's going to be plenty. So that's going to be two bedrooms. And I'll figure out what to do with that room here in a little bit. All right, now I've got an entryway somewhere over here. I'm going to need a hallway to access these rooms. So let's put down a hallway. Okay, remember halls have to be 36 inches. Now, right now, I'm measuring this from center to center. So I'm going to go an additional six inches to make sure I got my 36 inch clearance. And for now, I'm just going to hit draw this all the way through. I'll adjust it later. Okay, so I got two bedrooms uh, master bedroom, master bath area. This will actually end up partially being a bath. So if that is going to be my bath, you know, I want it to be at least five feet wide. I'm going to remove that. Okay, so it needs to be five feet wide because it is going to accommodate a bathtub. And because I'm measuring center to center, I'm going to go about five feet six. And actually, I'm just going to go ahead and go six feet. Okay, that gives me plenty of room to work with. Okay, and this, I'll figure out what to do with that later. Um, let's see. Master bedroom is going to be coming over a good size for master bedrooms. Good 12 feet sounds good. 12 to 13 feet, somewhere in there. 14 feet, maybe. All right, so I've got a master bedroom. Because this is a small house, I'm not going to really have a large, elaborate bathroom for my master bathroom. 
Um, so I'm going to go a little bit bigger than what I would go for about eight or nine feet right in here. Maybe a little bit more. I can afford to go a little bit more. Do it about right in here. And I'll use that space in there probably for my utilities, for like my air handler and my water heater. So master bedroom, uh, master bath. Um, this is obviously going to be some living area. And I need some kitchen somewhere. And what makes the best sense for the kitchen other than... Let's see, right along in here somewhere. And then kind of the living area right there. 